Hi, I'm Marie Finch, an actress here in Burbank, California, and I've been interviewed by Kit. Can we do that again? See, that happened to me. Okay. Hello, I'm Marie Finch, an actress here in Burbank, California, and I've been interviewed by Keith Andrew, and he's doing a marvelous job, and I'm just really proud of him, and keep up the good work, Keith. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keith Andrew, and you're watching the Keith Andrew Network. I'm here with Marie Finch. It's an honor and privilege to have me as a guest. So I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my dog show. Oh, thank you, Keith, for having me. I'm so excited. No, no the honor's all mine. For people who want to know what my talk show is about, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a word and disability, I can still amount to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you want to be. So prove to them you can step out to something. So hashtag break the labels. Well, hashtag, yeah, break the labels. I am always going to say break the silence, but after saying break the labels, it kind of gets, you know, natural. <laughs> so, yeah. yes, hashtag break the labels, but you're pretty much showing them if you're very passionate, you can accomplish anything. You shouldn't let no one stand in your way. Set being yeah. said, a new format. It's about 25, to be <laughs> between 25 and 26 minutes. It used to be a half hour. But now I'm working with um, Manhattan Neighborhood of Broadcasting. And they're like, okay, if you want to air your show, it's only 28 minutes. So I'm like, okay, let's make it easier. Maybe half hour max is a little long because usually it's like half hour, 40 minutes. Who's going to stand there and watch well, about long? So it's between 25, 26 minutes. You know, some episodes will air on Manhattan Neighborhood Broadcasting. will be 28. There's other ones will just be on YouTube. For, to, for right now, I am part of the Manhattan Neighborhood of Broadcasting. So anyone in New York City who lives in Manhattan every Saturday, 10 a.m. Well, not I was, it was 10 a.m. They didn't really ask me. But every Saturday, 10.30 in the morning on Channel 2, don't ask me why it's on Channel 2. That sounds like a big a big network. But Channel 2 on um, public broadcasting is the neighborhood, Manhattan neighborhood of broadcasting. You get to see my show at 1030. It's only uh, 28 minutes. I wish it was a half hour. But, hey, you know what? You give me a time slot and a day, I'm happy. So every Saturday, 1030, I have oh, – See, that's a part of my show. It's like disabilities. <laughs> Every Saturday, 1030, Channel 2. Make sure to watch it if you're in Manhattan. If you're not in Manhattan, don't worry about it. It will be on Facebook and YouTube 24-7. So you have you know, social media. Or if you want to wake up early in the morning and actually see me on national TV, it's Channel 2. But it's not about me. This is about you. The first question I want to ask you is, now for people who want to know, you are a professional actress. Yes. With everything that you accomplish in your life, what were some of your greatest moments that you achieved, exceed? My greatest moments. I would have to say, and speaking in front of about 800 people, in the presentation I had to do. Like you, Keith, I had a disability. I stuttered for the, probably the first six years of my life and had speech therapy. And so my challenge, and like you, challenging myself to get up and not be afraid to speak. And so I build my career into, that's why I was a speaker, a professional speaker for a state agency to help affordable housing. And to get up in front of them, 800 people with two videos, um, you know, side by side and 
that was probably the most challenging and exciting um, part of my life outside of acting. So oh, it sounds like fun. I was, I had that opportunity. Uh, maybe one day, right? Hey, it's never too late. Never. Hey, if you can pull some strings for me, I help you. You help me, right? <laughs> I don't have them yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everyone talks about reaching for that imaginary brass ring. But, you know, at the same time, you know, I was told, you know, I was never going to mount to anything. I, and it's like, you know what? Are you a fan of suits? I am. I'm a fan so of suits. So you're going to get this metaphor. That's why I asked you. You know, Harvey Specter says to Mike, what do you do when you're up against a wall? And Mike's like, I don't know. Harvey says you knock the goddamn thing down. And that's what I do. Whatever obstacles people throw in front of me, I'm going to show you one way or another, you know, I will overcome those obstacles and show you, hey, being on the spectrum of having a disability, I'm going to show you, look at what I can accomplish. Then people are be like, oh, well, you know, hey, I went to college for four years. I have a BA and bachelor's. You know, that's great for you. But for me, I never got an opportunity so right. creating the show and, and you can see pulling it out of thin air, pulling it out of thin air and showing you, hey, look at what someone has no education who's on the spectrum of being retarded. Look at what he was able to accomplish on his own for the past seven and a half years. And, you know, the best, some of the things uh, you will learn along the way in life is some of the best things is you do on your own. You know, yeah, you can say, oh, I had my coach in my corner. I had my parents in my corner. But at the end of the day, you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, you know what? I did this all by myself and no one can ever take that away from me. That's right. I mean, you know, it takes so much courage, Keith. I mean, to put yourself in a position to challenge yourself is just courageous. Um, and I think that's amazing because I think the more you work at it and just keep practicing, no one's perfect. We're not trying to get to perfection. There is no such thing, you know, but just the journey and, and learning and learning ways. I know for me, even with acting um, in the way there's certain words I still can't pronounce. I have kind of a process, slow processing. Um, I've never been labeled any such thing, but I know it's always been difficult for me um, to, to, I wouldn't say learn. I was very bright when I re read things, but when I had to read out loud to pronounce words because of the speech impediment I have, and I worked around that speech impediment. So instead of me trying to fit into that box, like you said, I was up on a panel with people with masters and PhDs, but my speech and my speaking was a way, and I remember, what was it, Denzel Washington and um, Tom Hank in Philadelphia, and he said, talk to me like a fourth grader. Remember that? And that was a, and that's why I love films. And that, it really resonated with me. It helped me as a child, a young, well, I wasn't a child, young adult coming up to talk to everyone like a fourth grader. People want to understand at a simple level. I don't have to speak these big words I can't pronounce. I, I'm incapable of pronouncing. I can work around it and still be efficient and great. And so that's what I've done all my life is I just worked around my disabilities. So I just think that's wonderful what you're doing. Well, you know, it's perfect, to, you know, for the show. If you don't mind me for X and what at, it's funny people ask me this now it's kind of ironic now i can ask other people this at what age did you realize you had a word in disability and did you ever use it as a crutch or did you say you know what i'm going to overcome it i learned a very young age i would say probably kindergarten um, when i learned that i was stutter a little bit when i got in front of people it was um i was a real shy timid child. Um, and then I remember reading probably about first or second grade. I would read, I remember reading animal backwards, aminal, right? I kept doing that with certain words. And so that's when the teacher realized, you know, I had to work on 
and, and go into a special uh, special speech therapy, I guess, at that time. That was years ago. Um, so that's when I first, I knew very young that I, I wasn't as quick as the other children in my class, but did it deter me? No, you know, there must have been something in me that I just wanted to be like everyone else so much so that I was going to work really hard to do it. And I think it was an internal challenge that, yeah, I'm going to do this, you know? And, um, I just kept listening to the speech therapy therapist and kept practicing, um, slowing down my speech and just being aware. So I was really lucky in my school system, even though it was public and I was a disadvantaged child as in terms of economic background, um, that at least back then we had a speech therapy um, or some type of therapy back then um, in our school. So I I'm just so glad we had something like that because I'm not sure where I would be if they didn't catch me at that young age. And um, I don't know, I could have went on to, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh grade and, and still, I think then at that point, my, um, I, I probably wouldn't be as confident, you know, ab about trying to learn and trying to get better and do better. No, I agree. And, you know, I actually had a speech therapist when I was younger and there's like, I was part of the audio visual department. And these were these two teachers. They were jackasses, but I did like them. Um, I kind of swear my words a little bit. Yeah. Instead of saying, "I'm Keith," is so they say, "Oh, it's feek." And it's like, yeah, oh, I got it. You know, I may have a disability, but I can see when someone mocks you. But it's kind of like, you know, you don't. My brother likes saying. People in glass houses should not throw stones. But I think everything that we accomplish in life and go through makes you stronger and it makes you a better person than most people. Yeah, I agree with that because I don't like labeling. I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm against labeling. I just think labels just really um, put people in these little boxes and no one want to, and they just don't want to try to come out of. And um, we're, we're just much more than that, right, as humans. So I, I think it's great that you're making this known and you're putting this out there. So everyone can feel comfortable and not feel like, oh, I have this impediment and I have to keep it as a secret and be shameful of it, the shame in it, right? Right. Of like, you know, there's times that people talk to me even now. And if I'm not in the right mind and focusing, the processing isn't quite there. I have to have them speak you know, say it again. Can you say it again? Can you say it a little slower? So these little things are just um, challenges. But like you, I said, once you find the tools to work around them, then it's your world. You can be whoever you want to be and do whatever you want to do. No, I agree with you 100%. Now we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, I'm going to ask you about social media has it helped you with your career when we come back? Hi, I'm Amelia Rose. Hey there, I'm Saki Mieta. Hi hey guys, I'm Alexandria Denise, and you're watching Keith Andrews' show. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, we are back from the commercial break. I'm here as Ms. Marie. Fins, thank you for sticking with us. With the last 13 minutes, we're going to talk about social media, and then I will pass the show over to you. With everything that you accomplish in your life, do you consider Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, do you consider these platforms that really influence people to take the time to know who you are and give you the opportunities that you have, that you've gotten, or do you think it's hard work and determination? I think social media, I, I like the idea that you can share with um your, your friends or the people that are following you about a little bit about your personality. I think you have to, with anything, it's you have to be careful. But social media has actually given me opportunities for um, film opportunities, um, commercial opportunities, um, by putting myself out there and to just um, express um, how I feel, especially in today's climate. I, I'm, a, I'm a bit older than you. So 
you know, speaking out on a lot of what's happening in a way that you can um, shed light on, I think is, is an interesting time. And it, it's just like we're Americans, so we have the, um, we can speak now and we can say what we want to say as long as we don't, I feel like as long as you don't try to hurt other people. Um, so for me, it's working well for me. Um, but with that, I, I do have to remember, and this is a really interesting thing. My social media is not my diary. <laughs> so I do have to remember that I'm a really passionate person. And so I do put things out that I believe in, and I feel like I'm responsible in and sharing um, what I feel, but at the same time, other people do too. And I have to respect that. Um, so I don't know if that long winded answer your question, but I like social media and it's not hard work for me because um, I am a creator. I, I'm creative. So I love taking pictures and sharing photographs, um, especially for people who can't get out, you know, people who can't see certain things and I can get out there and see and, and hike and, you know, go out there as much as I can with the COVID going on and share it with people who can't leave their home. So that makes me feel good. Well, you mentioned leaving a home. So the first thing I do want to say for our viewers, make sure to wear masks and gloves whenever you go out. 100%. <laughs> now, you also mentioned you had a film that you were working on. We, yes, we produced, well, I produced a film with my daughter, Jasmine and Trevor Nagel. And we did this in Sacramento, California, and it's called Month to Month, our first short film. And it was a great experience. It's the first time I ever produced a film. Um, I'm the lead in it. And it's now at film festivals. It was played just recently at Iowa Film Festival and won crit the Critics' Choice Award. So we're really proud of it. Um, you know, we're just a bunch of people who love film and, and stories. And we came together and made this movie. And um, it, what I loved about our, our whole team, it was multi-generational. We had, you know, people... Uh, the director, myself, and everyone that's, you know, I would say above 45. Um, and, and then we had the very young generation, the millennials there. So, we, you know, it was so great to have the two groups of our cast and crew being so multi-generational and multicultural um, and, and split with women and men. So it was, we had the best time on our set and it made me proud that we could represent, um, you know, society in that way to make this film. And it was so successful and everyone got along great. And it was, I don't know, I missed that group, that whole crew. But yeah, I'm excited about Month to Month. Um, it's about a woman who lost her husband. And so she succumbs to alcohol to numb herself. And then she has to rent a room out, you know, because at this point she needs the money. So she rents it to a young writer. And so the young writer, just him being there and their friendship, um, she little by little wants to live again. He's, and he's, and again, it's that gener intergenerational type of concept where he's very young and she's in, and she's in her forties and he's in his twenties. And so because of his youth and his um, passion, it reminds her of her passion and she quits drinking and she just kind of, you kind of see her change throughout the film. And so it, it was, um, it was, it's really nice. It's a really nice little film. No, absolutely. Now going back to your disability, do you feel, have you felt when you're doing the lines or reading the script and doing the parts, have you ever felt like your disability fired up? Or have you really conquered that? Um, sometimes it surprises me. It just comes out as I'm speaking. Um, and then I, my enunciation, uh, it just kind of blurs, you know, with my, it just blurs. And sometimes I would hear the director say, uh, can we take that again? Just be a little bit more clear. I hear that a lot, you know, can you be a little bit more clear? And I know what that means. That's enunciate try to enunciate because I, that lazy tongue or whatever I have, and I have no labels. I never, no one ever gave me one. Thank goodness. Um, but I know that speech 
can get lazy and, and slurred too, how it just kind of, and so um, I have to make sure that I'm enunciating and being clear and um, then it goes well. But yeah, it, it, it pops up every once in a while. You know, I have to very, I have to be aware of it. If I'm not aware of it, it can just appear. <laughs> yeah, I, I completely understand. You know, for me, when I first started my talk show, you could see my disability more. And when I'm nervous, you can see it more. But yeah. when you give yourself that self-confidence, you, you know, um, I read my friend uh, Raven, um, Scotty. He said to me, you know, you don't look retarded. You do seem a little slow. But, you know, that's why most people are slow. But like I said, once you start doing it and get into the rhythm, you know, you can, you know, it doesn't even come up. But when you first do something, you're like an old computer. But it's slowly loaded and all that. You can see it. So there are times when I do my interview, you do see the disability. And there are some times where you don't. Right, right. But the question I want to ask you, passing the show over to you, I do have a couple of questions for you off the air. Wrapping up, how can people follow you on social media? Are you on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram? Yes, I'm really, um, I use Instagram and Twitter more so. So I'm under Marie Bench, actress, um, uh, and both the Twitter and Instagram. So you can find me there. No, definitely. I will send you a friend request on Insta, um, Facebook. Well, we're actually friends on Instagram. I'm going to yeah. definitely send you one on Twitter. And you said you're on Facebook, right? I am on Twitter. I am on Facebook, too. Yes. Oh, well, there you go. And the last question I was going to ask you, you're, you mentioned you did a film with your daughter. Is your daughter also an actress since she follows in your footsteps? No, she's a producer. She produces. So she helped produce it. Um, she was in LA at the time. I just moved to LA um, from Sacramento and she's been living here since she graduated from CSUN. Um, and so she's in kind of in the realm and the business behind the scenes. So she's, um, you know, she's worked for an award winning um, producer and as an intern and she's now she's working with a high profile entertainer management company. Um, so yeah, she's only 25 and she's doing really well. I'm really proud of her, but she's behind the scenes. She won't be in front of the scenes. She's like no camera work for her. She, she won't be in front of it. Very old that idea. I was going to say, she's more than welcome. And if she changes her mind, she's more than welcome to be on the show. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, if she ever changes her mind, she's more than welcome to be on the show. Oh, great. I'll let her know. Now, the last question I want to ask you, when I first approached you to be a guest on my talk show, what was your, I want you to be brutally honest, when you first got the message, what was the first thing that popped in your head? What made you say yes? And after being a guest, how do you feel now and would you recommend it to other people? I, I first of all, I thought, wow, this is great. Uh, I, I, what you said, and you kind of, when you did approach me, you told me the little story behind why you're doing what you're doing. And that is so important. People need to know why we do what we do, right? I think people, you can't expect people to understand us. We have to help them understand. So you made me, you made me understand. And because internally I had this, um, you know, look, I, I don't know if, it's still a disability, but I never thought of it as a big disability, but you made me realize, yeah, I've had a disability I had to conquer too. And um, so I don't know. I just like, Hey, yeah, I, I want to know more about you. So that's what it was. I was, you know, I thought, wow, this guy is courageous. He's professional. Um, let me see what he has. Let me see his videos and see. And so I did, I checked it out because, <laughs> you know, you just never know in this world, especially on social media, who's real, who's not. Um, but I'm really proud of you, Keith. And I, I want to support, I support anyone who's trying to do better and work harder. And um, I think you're part of my tribe. So I was like, Hey, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> no, Absolutely. Now, wrapping up, it was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest, and I'm looking forward to part two down the road. 